So, let me start with the first presentation now. So, I will be presenting film measurement of the durability of uh, building our tightness, review and uh, analysis of existing studies. So, this work about the review of uh, field measurement of the durability is uh, part of a national project in France which was called the uh, Durabilitaire. And in fact, it was the, the first part, the state of the art. It was yeah, a, a task by itself. The second task was about uh, characterizing sorry, the evolution over time of uh, air tightness through m measurement campaigns. And this will be presented by Bassam at the end of this webinar. And the third task was about uh, developing laboratory control methods to test the durability uh, in, uh, in laboratory. And this will be presented by Andre Sidvak during uh, our next webinar in February 21st. So as far as uh, this state of the art was the first part of the durability project, the objective here was not only to learn from previous study, to learn the results of the previous studies, but also to improve the protocol for all the tasks of the project, such as the field measurements and the laboratory testing. So one of the results of this state of the art is recommendation on the protocol to perform uh, field measurements and uh, laboratory testing of the, of the durability. So this presentation is uh, written in two parts. In two parts, first, in situ measurements, the result of uh, in situ measurements. And after that, we found out that we were not really able to say what was what variation were due to a problem of durability, and what variation were due to measurement uncertainty and maybe seasonal variations. And so in the second part of this presentation, I will just give a few hints about uh, measurement uncertainty and, uh, and seasonal variations. So let's start with the results of uh, field measurements in, uh, of durability of air tightness in the literature. So here is, in just one slide, a summary of all the studies that uh, we have found out in uh, 2016 when we have done this, um, this review. So in the table, you have here, well, the country of the study, here the number of house that has been, uh, for which the durability has been tested. In blue, it's new houses. In green, it's uh, refurbished houses. Here is the year of construction of the house. Here, how long, uh, after how long have they been retested for the hair tightness? Here, the level of hair tightness, the kind of construction, the average variation of the hair tightness, and here, each time there is a minimum and the maximum. That means the improving of hair tightness for some houses and um, the deterioration of, um, of hair tightness. So let's focus on one study after the other to see what were the main results that uh, we have uh, been taken into account for, for developing the protocol and what was for us the main important results. Here in, U in uh, the US, they have tested 17 new houses and 17 refurbished houses, not very airtight as you see. And what is interesting is here is that in average, in the new houses, the uh, hair permeability has increased of 50%, while in the refurbished house, it has not changed in average. For each of them, there is some houses that have improved and some that have deteriorated. But here, for refurbished house, in average, it has not changed. And this difference in term and uh, the average, according to the authors, may be due to structural movements in uh, new buildings. So that would appear only in uh, new buildings and not in uh, refurbished buildings that have already done all their structural movements. In the Belgium study, well, I won't go too far in this because the Wolf will present it uh, just after me. Uh, what is interesting is that they have tested very airtight houses and uh, that were virtually identical. And while some of them have improved slightly and some of them have deteriorated, and so they conclude that maybe it's due to some of the occupant's behavior, and also because those houses are very airtight, and so the variations are, represent very small flow rates, 
Maybe also this variation is impossible to measurement and certainty. Um, in Sweden, they have tested six houses after a very long period, up to 10 to 20 years. And for the six houses, they have found out that half have increased, half have decreased, and they have found no correlation neither with the construction change made in the building nor with the age of the building. So that's what really something we wanted to, to improve for the, for, for the task two of the durability project is really to have a lot of information to be able to find correlation and explain why some improve and some houses deteriorate. Uh, there were already have a, a study in France on 30 houses, and in this study they have done an extended leakage detection. The objective was to try to find out where the leaks were appearing, and they found out that it was the leaks were appearing at the penetration of the hair barrier, so everywhere was uh, it's, uh, the hair tightness is done with mastics at uh, electrical appliance and also with the new non-airtight appliance that has been installed afterwards, such as uh, hood or some kind of lighting, integrated lighting. And we see that in average it has increased of 50 percent, so it's quite, quite huge, basically. But they are, yeah, they have not been able, they have found out where some leaks were appearing, but they have not been able to explain why it was appearing in some cases and not in some other cases. Um, this study from Germany has been done on uh, two passive houses, and this is very interesting because they have tested it after 25 years, so they were quite old houses, and they found out that the acrylic mastic that was set on Baker Road in those houses have not deteriorated at all in 25 years, and what have deteriorated was the windows and door gaskets on the opening, and so they have just changed it because it's quite easy as it's on accessible on the opening. For, so they have changed it for the new test. And for one of the two houses, the air tightness has not changed at all in, uh, in 25 years, provided that you change the uh, windows and door gaskets. And for the other one, it has an increase of uh, 34%. But once again, we are on very airtight houses, so we are talking about very small flow rate, in fact. And the last study from, um, from UK was also very interesting because uh, they have tested 23 houses and only one to three years old. And they found out that uh, it has deteriorated of uh, 25%. Well, they, they, have shown how they, were, they have shown that the timber frame dwelling were showing a largest change in the air tightness compared to plastered masonry. And well, they have um, proposed some kind of uh, interpretation for those change and mostly for the difference between the houses that improve and those that uh, deteriorate a lot. They say that maybe when the mastic is implemented in cold conditions, when it's heated for the first time, it tends to shrink and then to create leakages. So those variations here may be explained by the fact that some mastic had been implemented in cold conditions while other were implemented in a heated uh, environment. And also they are able to explain the performance improvement by the installation of uh, carpet and floor finishes after the original test that uh, may of course lead to improvement of the air tightness if the air barrier is done um, on the interior surface of, um, of the dwelling. So, conclusion about the on-site aging. It seems that the air tightness decreased in the first year after completion of the building and then stabilized. And there is various explanation factors that we have seen in the literature. Maybe heating the house for the first time may induce the shrink of mastics and then a deterioration well, in, the, in the first weeks of the, of the life of the building. And uh, while mastic shrinking when backer roads are used, uh, there is no mastic shrinking when uh, backer roads are used. Also, some structural movements in the first year of, 
of the life of the building and the packing may induce some cracking and then, of course, the deterioration of the tightness in the first years. We have also the occupant behavior that may explain that because they will do a lot of envelope drilling in the first years, for example, for installing the kitchen or, or things like that. And also, it's a teasing for the next uh, webinar here. They found out in Sweden in laboratories that insuitable implementation conditions for adhesive and mastic, so insuitable means in uh, cold and dusty conditions, conditions, leads to a very poor durability of, uh, of your tightness. And so this may explain also why it changed a lot at, uh, at the beginning of the, in the first year of life of the building. So impact on the testing protocol of this uh, fundings, we have made, we, it's important to make when you are doing film measurement a questionnaire to occupants to find out what the drilling has been made in the air barrier and what has been changed in the envelope of the building. It also seems important to make a very thorough uh, leakage detection and visual inspection to, to find out uh, where the, leak, the leaks are appearing and have a specific care on mastics and uh, penetration of the building structure inside the air barrier, for example, the carpentry. And also, it's uh, important to try to gather information about the product used for the air barrier, construction details, and the period when the air barrier was uh, laid out, where was it in the heating period or not, and whether the air barrier has been heated prior to the first test or, or not. Now, as I said at the beginning, when we are looking at those results, we always have the question about the measurement uncertainty. What in those variations we observed are due to measurement uncertainty and what is due really to a problem of uh, durability of building? Well, we, there is information about the reproducibility of your tightness test in the literature and, uh, well, if the test is performed 50 pascal and if you are doing the average between pressurization and depressurization test, we have quite a good reproducibility. So as far as we are testing at 50 pascal and trying to perform the test in the low wind conditions, the reproducibility is, uh, the reproducibility is, uh, is quite good, basically. Now coming to a question that has been raised a lot, lot of time about uh, seasonal variation. We also have done a review about the study done in, um, on this subject. We found out that um, in three-fourths of the study, there is a decrease in, uh, of uh, the permeability between winter and summer, while in one-fourth there is an increase. And uh, well, in the Netherlands, they are a bit very well representative of the rest of the world because they have three-fourths of decrease and one-fourth of increase also. We were really, so we were not really able to conclude with those uh, results, and so what we have done is have a look at the French database of uh, air tightness measurements, saying to ourselves, okay, if there is really a difference between summer and winter, uh, on who database we should be able to see it. That means that the results in the summer will be, shall be lower than uh, in the winter. But in fact, whatever the way we look at it, by construction kind, by uh, climatic zones in France, we see no difference between winter and summer. So we have concluded that in France, there is, because of the construction kind or because of the climate, we have no vari seasonal variation in, um, in our building. However, to reduce measurement uncertainty, it's better to have to perform the test at the same season. It's always better. And also, it's important to have the same tester to perform the test, to prepare the building the same way, to report precisely the building preparation so we can remember a few years after it to have device calibrated, to perform measurement in low wind conditions, and to use an indicator at 50 pascal rather than 4 and 10 pascal, and to use the average between pressurization and uh, depressurization test. So as a conclusion, it's, well, the state of the art shows that the hair tightness changed through years and it seems first to decrease in the first years and then more to stabilize because there is no much big difference between the studies that have been performed after two or three years and those after 
25 years. So it seems to decrease mostly in the first years of construction of the building. And there is really need of uh, on-site analysis to explain measurements results, to reduce the uncertainty that is, which is necessary to, for good interpretation of the results. It's better to use the 50 Pascal indicator and to test at the same season if, um, if it's feasible. So thank you for your attention.